assalamu alaikum in today's lecture we are going to talk about the line compensation and specifically the shunt erectness addition at the end of the transmission line in case of voltage arise condition just an overview of uh, the last lecture in which we talked about the line compensation and uh, in that lecture we said that at surge impedance loading the rectifier flow along the line is almost zero so there is no rective power flow along the line which means that we have a constant voltage profile along the length of the transmission line constant voltage profile along the whole transmission line but whenever we have uh, the loading greater than or less than the sill value then there is a chance of voltage rise as well as voltage drop and the voltage rise is the case when the loading is less than surge impedance loading and for voltage drop the loading should be greater than the surge impedance loading value so in these two cases we can maintain the voltage at the nominal value which is a constant voltage profile by either using the rector or capacitor like in the case of voltage rise we will be using shunt rector which is an inductor and in case of voltage drop we will be using shunt capacitor and there is another case in which we usually use a series capacitor at approximately mid of the transmission line and this is do so to increase the power transfer capability of the transmission line increase power transfer capability of the line so in today's lecture we are going to talk about the first part which is the addition of shunt rector in the transmission line whenever we have a voltage rise condition at the end of the unloaded transmission line so let's start from single line diagram of a transmission line in which we have added a inductor at the end of the line so the voltage across that inductor is vr and the current at the receiving end is ir current at the sending end is is and the voltage is v s and this is a long transmission line so whenever there is no load attached from the ferranti effect we know that there will be a rise of voltage at the end of the line and in order to calculate the current through this reactance we know that we can use the formula ir is equal to v r over j x l and from the formulas of the long transmission line if we have a lossless transmission line then the sending end voltage is equal to cos beta l into receiving end voltage plus z c sin beta l i r where this impedance is the surge impedance now using this i r formula in this equation we will get v r cos beta l plus j z c sin beta l into v r over j x l taking this v r common you will get v r into cos beta l plus z c over x l sin beta l and from here we can 
take this XL to the other side of the equality and after solving this equation we will get XL is equal to sin beta L over Vs over Vr minus cos beta L so this is the formula for the calculation of a reactance value whenever you are having a problem of uh, over voltage at the end of the transmission line you will put the value of sending and voltage here and the receiving and voltage here at whatever the value you are wanting to maintain the at the receiving end so whatever the value of the receiving and voltage you require at the receiving end you can put it here in this VR value but now if you want to maintain the constant voltage profile throughout the transmission line then you have to use Vs is equal to Vr which is commonly 1 per unit so if Vs is equal to Vr then this fraction will become equal to 1 so XL formula will be sine beta L divided by 1 minus cos beta L here there is Zc as well into Zc so this is uh, the formula that you will be using for the constant voltage profile throughout the transmission line which means the Vs should be equal to Vr so therefore the fraction term that was in the reactance formula will be equal to 1 now this is an example that will be calculating the receiving end voltage and uh, the reactor's value and the MBR the of the reactor that will be attached at the end of the transmission line. The characteristics of the transmission line are given to us which are the sending end voltage which is equal to 500 kilovolt, the surge impedance that is equal to 290.43 ohms and the beta L value 21.641. This beta is the phase constant and this L is the length of, uh, of the line. In the first part of the question we have to calculate the receiving end voltage which is Vr. Now from the question we know that Vs is equal to 500 kilovolt and this is line to line value. So in order to apply the long transmission line formulas we have to convert this line to line voltage value into line to neutral or phase value. So to do so we will divide 500 angle 0 with under root 3 and you will get the value of line to neutral value for sending and voltage which is equal to 288.675 kilovolt now in the question it is said that the line is open ended so if the line is open ended it means that IR is equal to 0 and from the equation of sending and voltage VR cos beta L plus J I R Z C sin beta L is equal to sending end voltage so if this I R is equal to 0 so this imaginary part will be equal to 0 and V S is equal to V R cos beta L we know the value of uh, beta L which is equal to 21.64 1 degree V S value is 2288.675 volt and we have to calculate the VR value so the VR value will be equal to 310.57 kilovolt so this is your receiving end voltage and this is a phase value for line to line value you have to multiply it with under root 3 and VR line to line is equal to 537.9 kilovolt 537.9 kilovolt so you have calculated the receiving end voltage when the line was open ended so there was no load attached so if the sending end voltage is 500 and the receiving end voltage is 537.9 kilovolt it means there is the front effect in the transmission line due to which we have increased voltage at the receiving end so in order to reduce this voltage till the nominal value we will use the formula which is xl is equal to sin beta l over 1 minus cos beta l into zc so this is the formula for the reactance that has to be applied at the end of the line in order to 
remove this voltage variation which is about 37 kilovolt 38 kilovolt at the receiving end and we know the beta L value already from the question which is 21.641 and the ZC value is also given to us which is 290.43 ohms so after putting the values here in this formula you will get XL is equal to 1519.5 ohms so this is the value of a reactance that you will be adding at the end of the line now in order to get the rating of the shunt reactor in MVAR we will be using the formula Q is equal to voltage square over XL and the rated voltage that should be at the same end is 500 square because we are using one here in the denominator which is equal to Vs over Vr so we assumed that the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage will be equal to 1 per unit right so if they are equal it means the sending end voltage is 500 so we are trying to get 500 voltage 500 kilovolt level of voltage at the receiving end so the rated voltage at the receiving end should be 500 kilovolts divided by XL value which is 1519.5 ohms so the rating of the shunt reactor should be equal to 164.53 MVAR so in this way you can calculate the value of uh, reactance that has to be added at the end of the line and the rating of that particular shunt tractor that is being used in order to reduce the voltage at the receiving end thank you